Numbers, uh, so beautiful. Oh, hello, it is I, the Count. Yes, they call me the Count because I love counting things. Yes, and today I'm going to count one of my favorite things up to the number of the day. <laughs> A little exercise warm up. Yes, good, good, good. Mm, yes, <clears throat> I wonder what the number of the day will be. Huh? Are you ready to find out? I know I am. I love four. Could it be four? Um, Count, it's not me. Oh, very well. I shall continue. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Two. Ten. Maybe it's ten. I dearly love ten. Count, it's not me. Well, then, when will the number of... When is it coming already? Oh. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Oh, 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 where, oh, where is the number of the day? Where can it be? Fourteen. 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 Yes, indeed. Hey, I hope you are as excited as the count is about the 14th birthday of the Quest Church, all right? I'm Jim Dunn. I'm the lead pastor here. I've been the lead pastor all 14 years now, for better or worse, and uh, we're celebrating the 14th uh, anniversary birthday 
of the launch of the Quest Church. Now, if you're joining us online or you're brand new to the Quest Church, I do need to be tell you up front, this is going to be a really different day. On most Sundays, we'd love for you to be able to come into the Quest, tune in online, and hear something that would help you on your faith journey, wherever you're at on that journey. Whether you would say, I'm not even sure I believe, or you're trying to figure this out, or you've been along in the faith journey for a while, we'd hope to meet you there with some things that would make a difference in your life on Monday. And today's not necessarily that kind of day, okay? Uh, and, but I don't think it will be a waste of your time, but it is a little more insider-focused day. We're going to talk to folks who are a part of the Quest Church as we celebrate and as we look at where we're at as a church and where we're going, all right? And so if you've tuned in online, this may not be the perfect day for you, but there is some great music coming up, so I wouldn't tune out just yet, okay? If you're our guest today in the room, would you take out that uh, worship guide? Inside, there's a communication card. Really, I'd like for everybody to take that out and at least write your name on it. You can find the wor- this guide online as well right there on the homepage of our website. If you'll at least write your name on that card, tomorrow my staff and I, we're going to pray over every one of those cards by name, so we'll pray for you. If you're our guest today, would you give us just a little more information about yourself, who you are, and specifically, I always love to know how you heard about the Quest. What got you here today to this crazy place uh, that we call the Quest Church? On the back side of that card, you're going to find information about some next steps you can take. And we've got some awesome stuff coming up that you could be a part of uh, to enrich your marriage. You want to take a look at that? Uh, And then there's a place for prayer requests. And so online, there's a button for prayer requests. We'd love to pray for you specifically. There's something specific we can pray for. Write that down again. We will pray for all those cards tomorrow. And then uh, I'll send that out to our our prayer team group of about 40 people who will make a commitment to pray for you throughout the week. Unless you mark that as confidential, and you may say, Jim, I don't want a lot of people knowing about this. Check that confidential box, then only myself and your gathering pastor for this gathering will know about that, but we want to pray for you, okay? If you're our guest in the room today, at the end of the gathering, take that card, drop it in the .com box. That stands for donations and commitments and communications. That's one of the ways you might give today. If you choose to do that, there's an envelope on your table, or or excuse me, at the box. You can put that donation in. You can do that online through our website. You can text to give through the app as well, those of you watching online. Thank you so much. For those of you who tune in online and then choose to give to be a part of supporting the work that God's doing here at the Quest Church, making it possible for us to celebrate 14 years of the Quest Church. And then finally, as our guest today in the room, on the way out, we'd love to give you a gift. Uh, Back at this wall we call the information wall, there are some books and Bibles there that we think you might enjoy. Stop by that on your way out. Take any one of those as a gift, just a way we can say thank you for choosing to be at the Quest Church today. And again, you're here on the day that we're celebrating our 14th birthday or anniversary of the church. Yeah. Thank you for that. So it was on September the 9th of 2006 that we held our first full-on public worship gathering right here in this room, as a matter of fact. Here's what the place looked like uh, 14 years ago to the, to the weekend, anyway, that we launched the Quest Church in this very spot. 82 people showed up for that very first gathering that we had, and the Quest Church was launched and began. And I got to tell you, we could reminisce about so many things. I won't bore you with all those details today, but it was an exciting time. It was a fun time to be a part of seeing God doing something so uh, new and exciting in our lives as the folks who are part of that and in this community. But with full disclosure, you know, if I could take you back to that time, and, and there's just a very few handful of people that were around in those first days. Jan and Renee Vasquez, our original team members, JJ and Stacy Williams, our executive pastor, showed up right there at the beginning. Those were also very challenging times. As a matter of fact, we were just shy of two years into this thing, and I told you that we had 82 in that first public gathering, and almost two years later, our average attendance was 82. 
It was, I mean, we were, we were blowing and going, right? We weren't reaching anybody, and we came to reach people, and, but God was up to something. And if you uh, wanted to know a little bit more about that journey, I actually shared that discouragement and then some of the moment, that, some about the moment when God revealed to us that he did have great things in store for the Quest Church. I shared that in a message we did recently called Beyond Belief a series, and at the end of that uh, that series, message number five, I talked a little bit about that. If you were so inclined to, to just, in your life, sometimes when you wonder where God is, there's a moment when God showed up. And beginning in September of 2008, the Quest Church began a growth tra- trajectory for the next uh, 11 years that continued all the way up to the year 2020. And we're not even going to count this year, okay? Like, we're going to forget about this year if we can. And, and, and uh, the numbers were exciting. Over 700 people regularly begin to attend the Quest Church. But more importantly than that, the numbers that matter the most to us are the stories of connection with our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so here's the things that matter the most that, that I want to celebrate on our 14th anniversary. Since 2008, and I told you things didn't go that well in the first couple of years, but since 2008, over 1,100 people have come through our doors and said, I need to know more about that Jesus you guys say you're following at the Quest Church, man. That's an incredible number, folks. 518 people have followed Jesus in baptism. If you were with us just a couple weeks ago, we had baptisms. 518 people have not only said, I want to I know more about this Jesus, but I want to follow him, as you guys are talking about, in baptism. And then we, as a, a church that was planted, we this church was started out of Family Fellowship Church in Greenville. They sent this group out to start it. And then we, in 2012, sent a group out to start a church in Terrell, Texas. That church still going today, making impact because of you, because of the impact of the Quest Church. And all along the way, here's what I can tell you about uh, what makes the Quest Church great. Number one, it's a great God. We have a great God who, who has a great uh, love for people and who wants to see people come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And then when you combine that with great people, Matter of fact, uh, the Quest Church at, at 700 in average attendance and some of the things we've experienced, it places us in the top 5% of all churches in the United States. I mean, it's, it's really pretty crazy to me to think about right here in Roy City, Texas, on our little east side here in this warehouse complex is one of the top 5% churches in all of the United States. And so when that happens, I get asked from time to time, Jim, What's the recipe for success at the Quest Church? And, and, you know, all glory has to go to our great God. It's only by God. But when you combine a great guy with great people, you're going to get a great church. And along the way, God has brought some incredible people, great people, just like you people sitting here today to be a part of the Quest Church that have connected and shared their lives and shared their loves and sacrificed and served to be a part of the mission that God's given us to proclaim the good news and offer help for life's hurt. And so on the occasion of our 14th birthday, I'd like to recognize some folks who have made our partnership commitment and then lived that out. As a matter of fact, we've got a group of folks today that have been partners in the quest. And, and I'll tell you in just a minute how you could become a partner if you choose to. But these are folks who 10 years ago, said we commit to the mission, vision, values of the Quest Church and have shared their lives with us now for 10 years. And I think that's worthy of some celebration. So 10-year partners, would y'all come on up? Would you guys give them a hand real quick? Our gathering pastor is going to come out. We got a, a gift for you guys. I wish it could be like a new car or something like that. I mean, you deserve it after 10 years, uh, but uh, just a small way to say thanks. This is Gary and Holly Williams and David and Sharla Pittman, who 10 years ago now came and, and became partners in the Quest Church. I was thinking, guys, about some of the stuff you've experienced, and so... Uh, We had Quest East and Quest West when you guys came to the Quest Church. So we used to have two different gatherings in two different buildings. One was a little bit country, Quest West. One was a little bit rock and roll, Quest East. Uh, When you guys came, we, uh, during that time frame, 
uh, we were just a small church, man, just a couple hundred people that were attending the Quest Church, and you guys have been here all through part of that journey. And I just want to say thank you very much that you have put up with me as the lead pastor for 10 plus years now is a testimony. Uh, I don't know to what. <laughs> so, thank you guys very much, man. Let me pray for y'all. Thank you for your, your service to the church. God, thank you so much for folks like Gary and Holly and David and Sharla who came and connected here and committed here, God. And these are two couples that they have served, they have given, they've sacrificed, they've shared their lives in love all along this journey. And this church is a better church because of folks like them. I thank you for their willingness to follow you and to do that in conjunction, Lord, in connection with the Quest Church. Thank you for the blessing they are to all of us because of what they give and do here. And thank you for the blessing they are to me as their pastor. I thank you so much for their lives. I pray for blessings on their homes and their families. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much, man. Thanks, David. Thank you, David. Thanks, Charlotte. Appreciate y'all very much. Thanks, Holly. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate you. Man, if you came to the Quest Church in the time that these folks did, uh, in those early days, and we were we were just kind of the the momentum and energy was just really beginning to build at that time. We uh, began our first Help for Life's Hurts ministry, our mission to proclaim the good news, offer help for life's hurts. During that year, these folks came 10 years ago. We began our first Help for Life's Hurts ministry to try to make a difference where life hurts the most. And I think the thing that defined the Quest Church uh, 10 years ago is we were thinking about songs. That, that This song didn't exist then. But if it had of, the thing that defined us 10 years ago was that we had some high hopes. And the band's going to help us remember that now. All right, come on, Quest Church. You know the song. Let's sing along with us. Come on.
Please be seated. So that was the group of folks who became partners 10 years ago. The second group of folks I want to recognize today became partners five years ago between September 2014 and September 2015. If you guys will go ahead and come on stage. Now, this group had a very different experience coming into the Quest Church. Matter of fact, by the time these guys came along, the Quest Church was averaging a little over 600 per Sunday. That, kids, uh, that Quest West building had to be turned into Kids Quest because our children's ministry had expanded and grown so rapidly. And the, we, that year, the church itself grew by over 100 people. More than 100 new people came. So there's a large group of our folks from 2014 to 2015, including Danny Martinez and Shaggy and Amber Kunmuller and Lori Taylor and Latricia Autry, and Kim Hoyt, and Sarah Vasquez, and Michelle Bakeshi, and not Josh and Jen. They came along after that. Uh, so thank you guys so much, man. Y'all came to the Quest Church and jumped in. Here's why I look across this group and see people who wasted no time jumping in and serving and being a part, and it become a vital part of everything that's going on at the Quest Church. These are folks I see show up week after week and serve and share their lives and love. And thank you for that so much, man. Thank you. Your church is an awesome church because it takes great people like you, parts of the body who've been put together just by God's design, man. And I appreciate y'all so much for that. Let me pray for you guys. God, thank you so much for this group of folks that I've gotten to share five years with, get to know and to love. Thank you for their heart to share their love with others at the Quest Church. This is a group of folks who over and over and over again I've seen show up and make a difference as they serve you and serve others. And I thank you for bringing folks like these to the Quest Church who have made their church better, God, who make my life better because I get to be a a small part of their lives, and God, who are advancing your kingdom as they serve you. Man, I pray for your blessings on this group of people, and I pray that we can celebrate many more years of serving you together. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Now, if you're wondering what this whole, why we call them partners, then I want to invite you to come out to our next partnership seminar. Well, I'll explain that. I'll explain what these folks committed to when they said they wanted to be a Quest partner. And at the end of that, give you the opportunity, if you would so choose to, to become a partner in the Quest yourself. That happens on the last Sunday in October. I believe that's October 25th at 4.30 to 8 p.m. right here in this room, our partnership seminar. We'll feed you a meal. We'll take care of the child care. And we actually have a pretty good time together if you choose to come out and find out about that. I think as I thought about this group of people that we just recognized, the names on the list, the thing that uh, stood out to me in many ways was there's a number of people that I think they would say that the quest and the connection here was a part of their rescue story, that this was the place that, and what we've always wanted it to be, a place where people came and that we could help facilitate a connection. We don't change lives. Jesus changes lives. But if we can facilitate, we can be a part of helping people connect to the God who loves them, and to Jesus who gave his life for them. That's what we've always been about here at the Quest Church. And I think there's some folks in that group and folks sitting in this room today, no matter how long you've been at the Quest Church, that would say, you know what? The Quest Church, it's a part of my rescue story. Jesus 
share your lives and love here at the Quest, no matter how long you've been a partner. But I couldn't help thinking about five to ten years from now when we invite a group of people on stage and talk about their experience when they became partners in 2020. And you, and you know what I mean? There's, we've got some things that we're going to look back on. We're celebrating the 14th birthday of the Quest Church and what really... I think we all agree, and there's so many words that have been used to describe it, the most chaotic year I've ever experienced. You know, think about this. If I was a prophet on par with the great prophets of the Old Testament, and I had showed up last year on our, our anniversary and said, hey, God, uh, church, God has revealed some things to me, okay, that I want you to know about the next year. Um, we're going to have a statewide shutdown. You're not going to be able to leave your house. Uh, the church is going to be closed for 10 weeks, and you won't be able to come. Uh, we're going to have a, a year marked by violent protest all over our country. Uh, you're going to have to wear a mask when you go out in public and when you come to church. And then we're going to have mask protests that break out everywhere. And finally, church, here's the great news for 2020. Our church is going to go from a church of 700 plus to a church of about 300, man. That's, it's, it's, you know, if, if, it's no wonder they didn't like the prophets in the Old Testament, right? Like Nobody wants to hear that message. Partners, those of you at our annual partnership meeting, the first Sunday in December, we have a partnership meeting just for partners on Sunday night. Uh, so you want to become a partner before then so you can be a part of that. 
but I always do this attendance chart. And, you know, that thing every year has gone up. I'm not doing that chart this year. All right? I'll just tell you all right now. We're going to pretend like this didn't happen. But, and so full disclosure, man, if I think about 2020 and our 14th birthday, uh, this has probably been the most challenging year I've ever been through as a pastor. You know, uh, I, that, that second year when we weren't growing and we, we literally thought we were going to have to shut this thing down, that might have been harder, but that's far enough ago now. I don't remember that pain as well, right? Like I've, I've kind of gotten over that. This one's still real, and I know you're still feeling the effects of it too. And and so I just, I, I just want to be honest with you today. I try to be honest with you all the time. If I say that, I want to be honest with you today. He's like, oh, you lied to us last week. So I want to continue to be honest with you and just say, you know, I typically leverage this message to kind of cast some vision and talk about the great things we see coming up and, and give us a kind of a roadmap to follow in the next year. And I, it's just a struggle to do that, right? Like we're still in the middle of the mess and many things about what lies ahead aren't really that clear. And I know you're wrestling with those same things too. And I personally, and I don't fault you if you, if you do this, I've resisted the lure of saying, I can't wait for things to get back to normal. You know, like, hey, I hear many people say, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. Like somehow the flip of the calendar is just going to change everything, right? And it'll all go away. Like we were going to wave our magic wand and 2021 is going to be better. And I certainly hope that's true. And I don't want to be, you know, negative Nelly today by any means, but there's no guarantee that's the case. And so your leadership team and I can tell you what we've tried to do during this, this time and whatever lies ahead is just to navigate it with wisdom, to navigate it with the thought of how do we stay on our mission no matter what the environment around us might be. Because our mission remains the most important thing. And so I want to take just a few minutes this morning, and and my goal today is, is for those of you who are part of the Quest Church to just recenter us on our mission. Because no matter what lies ahead, the mission that we're on remains the most important. The man we are following and the mission he has given us remains unchanged, folks. And it doesn't matter what might come, the things that will guide us through that and will allow us to be a church that continues to have impact and influence and to make a difference and advance God's kingdom are the very same things that have guided us for the past 14 years. We'll go forward on the same principles that we have reached this place with. And I just want to remind us of that. For partners in the quest, that my goal is just to refocus us today. And if you're not a partner in the quest, you're joining us online, I think this will at least give you some information about what this church is about and even what Christians are supposed to be about. Because when we talk about the church, we're just talking about a group of people who have agreed to follow Jesus together, coming together on a mission. And, and I'm fully confident, okay? Here's what I can say with a surety and certainty and with vision for 2020 and beyond, the rest of 2020 and beyond. I'm fully confident that our church will continue to have great impact and influence in our community for the glory of God and for the name of Jesus. I absolutely believe and am committed to that happening because you can be certain of this, that the church that Jesus builds will always continue to increase in impact and influence and will, be, and will never be overpowered, never be overcome. Jesus himself said that. Matthew records it for us. You've probably heard these words in some way before where Jesus said, I'm going to build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And folks, if you were to look back through history and see the truth of that, it is really astounding at the efforts and attempts that have been made to wipe out Christianity, to wipe out the church, and that nothing has ever been able to do it. 
And so I'm quite confident that COVID and chaos and conspiracy theories and even County Judge Clay Jenkins can't wipe out the church, all right? I'm not going to worry too much about those things. And could I just kind of give a little hope and help to Christians today? Would you quit worrying about those things, okay? Those things are not going to stop the mission and the movement of Jesus. But let me be clear about something today. Not every church, not every group gathered together and hangs a sign that says church is a church that is built by Jesus. And I'm not saying that to condemn any other church. I'm not even naming names or thinking of anybody. But some churches can be conquered. Some churches can be stopped because they're not connected to the head of the church. And when you take the head off of any living thing, it's dead, okay? Anything that lives and has a head without the head is dead. And so the the critical component of a church that can't be conquered is connection to the head of the church. And Jesus is the head of the church, okay? Jesus is the head of the church. The church exists because of Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, the apostle Paul writes this. Christ is the head of his body, the church. We're a body of believers together. He is the source of the body's life because life comes from the head. He's the firstborn son who was raised from the dead in order that he alone in all things might have first place. It's all about Jesus. He's the head of the church. Please make no mistake about that. If you haven't been around the Quest for very long, I'm not the head of the Quest Church. We have a leadership team of six men who who guide the church, but they're not the head of the Quest Church. The person who gives the most, and I appreciate you, by the way, but you're not the head of the Quest Church, all right? The person who's the most popular, we're not voting on who's going to be the head of the Quest Church. The head of the Quest Church is Jesus Christ. And if he's not the head, then we're not even really a church. Because the church is the body of Christ, and if Jesus is not the head of it, there is no life. And so our commitment to Jesus Christ as the head is what brings life to the body. Nothing, nothing can change that. And it might sound, for those of you who've got some church background, you've heard that before. And it might seem, you know, like, well, that's just obvious, Pastor Jim. But not every church is connected to the head. Not every Christian is connected to the head that is Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, in this same letter to the Colossians, later on Paul would write this, and he would say, don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worship of angels, saying that they have had visions about these things. The reality is their sinful minds have made them proud. He said they have lost connection. They are not connected to Christ, the head of the body. Because he, when he's the head, he holds the whole body together with its joints and ligaments. And it grows as God nourishes it. The church that is connected to Christ will grow because God is nourishing that church. But notice what Paul says, folks. Just having a bunch of religious activity doesn't make us connected to Christ. And not every church out there, and I'm not condemning any church again, I'm not picking on any church, but not every church is because they have the name church and because they do religious things and because they pray religious prayers and they even say they have visions about religious stuff is connected to Christ. We lose connection with the head and we lose life. And so we must stay connected to Christ. That church will not be conquered. That church is going to be nourished by God. That group of believers is going to overcome whatever might come our way. And so what I want to do for just a minute today is ask you to join me, those of you who are part of the Quest Church, in evaluating our connection to Christ. Let's take a look today as we sit here on our 14th anniversary and think about are we fully connected to Christ? And there are three things that we've discovered as you go through partnership. So if you're a partner of the Quest, you've heard this before. But I want us to evaluate that today. But here's the thing. I don't want you to evaluate that just as what the people, other people do. But what about you? Because ultimately, it's an evaluation of each one of us. Our connection to Christ as we serve Him together. 
And there are three things that will be absolutely true, that must be true, about a, a church or a Christian that is connected to Jesus Christ as the head. Matter of fact, I want you to do a little reading this, next, this week, and you'll learn so much about the church and our connection together and what we're doing here and who's doing what and why we're doing it if you read Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. But we're going to dive into just a little snippet. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Because the apostle, now again, the Apostle Paul's writing about a lot of stuff, so we're just diving in kind of in the middle of a thought. Instead of some other things, okay, and you'll need to read that, we're going to speak the truth in love, growing then in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church, okay? Got that, got that figured out. And then listen to what Paul says. He, Jesus Christ, makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, the part that he's fitted together to do, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So when Jesus fits a group of people together and he is the head, he makes three things happen, right? He makes that group healthy, he makes that church growing, and he makes it full of love. Those three things are the evidence of a connection with Christ. If we're going to evaluate ourselves today as a church and as individuals and ask the question, am I connected to Christ? Because the Apostle Paul said you can have religious activity and not be connected to Christ. Just because we've been showing up here and calling ourselves the Quest Church doesn't mean we're connected to Christ. The proof is in the pudding, okay? Where the rubber meets the road is in these three things. Are we connected to Christ? Well, are we healthy? Are we growing? And are we full of love? That's the standard of evaluation. So let's, let's dive in. Number one, are we healthy, okay? And at the Quest Church, we define that by the word unity. Health equals unity. Now, remember, the Apostle Paul is making a comparison between the physical body, this body that you got on today, and a spiritual body, a group of believers joined together. And he says, in the body, it's healthy, okay? Health in your body is a sign of unity. When your physical body has disunity, you're going to have a health problem, right? Like your heart is meant to beat at a very specific rate. And if it beats too fast, that's a problem. And if it beats too slow, that's a problem. It's out of unity with the body, and you'll have trouble. If you, you have a, a certain number of white blood cells, and when you're healthy, that number's, I don't know what that number is, but it's that number, okay? And if there's too many of those, I'm not a medical professional, all right? That's a, if there's too many of those, that's not a good thing. And if there's too few of those, that's not a good thing. They're not in unity. When you have sickness, it's because there's something in your body, and your body is actually attacking itself to fight that sickness. Your body is in disunity. Your physical body is unhealthy when it has disunity. And folks, that's absolutely true of a body of believers, of Christians when they get together. The most unhealthy thing, the thing that kills more churches than anything else there is, is disunity. It's unhealthy. In a healthy body, all of the parts are working together, and that body has unity. And so a church that is connected to Christ is known by its unity. A Christian that is connected to Christ will be in unity with the other believers that they do life together with in this thing called church. Let me, I need to say that again, okay? A church that is connected to Christ will have unity because he makes the whole body healthy, growing, and full of love. And a Christian that is connected to Christ will be in unity with their church because Jesus ain't sending mixed messages. I mean, think about it. This is just obvious, okay? If Jesus is the head and he's the only head, then he's not sending mixed messages. And you and I don't get to sit around and go, well, I disagree with that, and I guess I'm right and they can be wrong, or we're going to, you know, uh, or we're going to uh, agree to disagree. No. If our signals are coming from our head, Jesus Christ, then we're going to have unity. The Apostle Paul, wrote to a church in Corinth that was deeply divided. I mean, you think churches today are messed up. You ain't seen nothing like the church in Corinth, okay? They have big-time problems. 
And the apostle wrote to, Paul wrote to them to try to bring unity back into that church group, that group of believers. And I want you to listen. Let's see what Paul says the acceptable amount of disunity is. Here's what he said, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, and I appeal to you based on the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. How many is acceptable? Zero. Be of one mind. Why, how can we be of one mind? Because we got one head. Perfectly united in thought and purpose. How united? Perfectly united in thought and purpose. Now, folks, listen. Division in a church is a sign that somebody's not connected to Christ. Now, it might be me, okay? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's always you. I'm not saying that the leadership team can't fall short of being connected to Christ. I'm not saying that somebody who's the most spiritual person in the quest might not be the person that's disconnected. But when we have division, the first thing we've got to evaluate is our connection to Christ as they because he is not creating division in the body. And so we have to look at ourselves and say, if I'm not in unity with my church, with my other body of believers, there's something going on here that's not from Jesus, okay? I tell you, I've prayed for unity more than any other thing in the history of the Quest Church. From the very beginning of the Quest Church, well, I would pray for unity, and over and over and over again, you can ask our leadership team, you can ask folks who join me in prayer circles, the thing I'll bring up the most, pray for unity in our church. Pray that God would reject and rebuke any form of division that might try to spring up in our church. Because that's the thing that will bring sickness and will kill us. And so you think about this past year of our church, especially 2020, and our commitment to that unity. Man, it's been challenged like never before, hasn't it? We have had to wrestle with some things that we never thought we would wrestle with that could potentially come between us and our unity here at the Quest Church, man. From the beginning of the all that we've been through, my greatest fear was the protection of the unity of the Quest Church. Because we were having to navigate decisions that I never dreamed we would. I, I, there was no background for it, no thought for it. There's nothing in my wonderful pastoral training that prepared me for the idea that we would be navigating some of the things we had to navigate. Closing the church, whether we're going to wear masks, what kind of protocols we take. And here's the thing about those. Those decisions begin to infringe on our personal preferences and our political ideology. And for many of the folks who claim to be Christians, let me just say I'm concerned that we became distracted and disconnected and even divided over things that really weren't spiritual issues whatsoever, right? Like didn't make any difference whatsoever in the kingdom of God. And I'm not picking today, okay, but I do just want to be honest. Like, it, it, and, and probably this is to the folks that are watching online that, that haven't come back. But if you're choosing to stay away from your church because you disagree with us asking you to wear a mask, how does that reflect a connection to Christ? That's not a spiritual issue. That's not something that we would divide over, right? If you're choosing to stay away from your church because you disagree with something that is related to a political ideology, come on now, that's not connection to Christ. Our unity is based on something much bigger than that. And so I want to challenge those of us who may have disconnected over things that really aren't spiritual issues. But I also want to do this, more importantly, and that's to give huge praise and thanks to the majority of the folks at the Quest Church. Our Quest body, through all this, has stayed unified. And I want to thank you so much for that, church. There's evidence. As I evaluate our connection to Christ, and if number one is unity, there is clear evidence of our connection to Christ in our unity. Because the Quest Church through this has stood firm in our commitment to one another based on our relationship with Christ. And it's okay. 
that we have different personal preferences and different political beliefs and that we uh, think differently about a lot of different things. None of those are what we're coming together based on. We're coming together based on our connection to Christ. And that's what drives our commitment to one another. And I've been so proud, so grateful, so so uh, inspired to be a part of the Quest Church through this time and your commitment to unity absolutely shows that we've been connected to Christ and that our church remains healthy. Number two is this. If Jesus is the head of the church, he makes it. Notice that. Didn't say this is optional stuff. He makes the whole church healthy. He makes it growing. He makes it growing. And, and we define that by reaching out, okay? Growth is the norm for the physical body. Let's go back to our analogy. In your physical body, you start off little, right? You're born, you know, eight pound, five ounce baby Jesus. There you go in the police diaper and don't even know a word, right? Well, so you're born little. But you've got, think about this. This is what's so, this is so powerful. You've already got, when you're born, every muscle, ligament, tendon, organ that you're ever going to have, but you're just born little. And then they begin to grow. And all those things grow together, right? And then one day you even outgrow what you were made to grow for. No. Uh, so, uh, so, and then you reproduce, okay? In a healthy human body, then you have the ability to reproduce. Now, sometimes that doesn't happen, but that's the atypical. That's not the norm. That's the sign of, of a problem, right? And so the normal for a human body is it grows and then later in, in maturity has the ability to reproduce. And so every church ought to be, as Jesus makes it, a growing, reproducing church, all right? When a church is connected to Jesus Christ, it's going to grow and it's going to reproduce. Because when Jesus is the head, we've got a very clear purpose, a purpose that we can be perfectly united in. Remember when Paul said that? Perfectly united in thought and purpose. Here's the purpose that, perp uh, that perfectly unites us. It's the purpose of Jesus, and he made it very clear over and over and over again. You know this scripture already, John 3, 16 and 17, where Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but he sent him, why? To save the world through him. What was Jesus sent here to do? To save the world. Jesus himself said it this way, the Son of Man, and that's a name that he used often to refer to himself, I came, my mission, why I am here is to seek and to save those who are lost. A person who is connected to Christ, a church who is connected to Christ, has no question about what the mission we're on is. It is a mission to seek and to save those who are lost. And every church that's connected to Christ, is intentional about seeking and saving those who are lost. And every Christian, folks, every person who claims to be a Christ follower, the evidence of that is that we are on a mission to seek and to save those who are lost because that's what Jesus came to do. And people who are following Jesus are on that mission. And our opportunity to connect people to Jesus Christ, I mean, that was challenged more than it's ever been challenged in the history of the Quest Church, right? More than ever, we faced that our, 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 that opportunity got impacted. Let me tell you a little bit about the Quest Church. The Quest Church was designed, our mission, our, our goal, our purpose from the very beginning was to be the kind of place that people could come at whatever stage of their faith journey and, and be accepted and be uh, uh, loved and be brought in to explore faith at whatever stage or, or pace they wanted to, right? We've never been a place where we said, you've got to fit into this box and meet these requirements before you get to come and be a part of the Quest Church. No, we've said, come as you are. And, and sometimes I'm amazed at how as you are, people come to the Quest, right? I mean, they take that seriously, right? Praise Jesus for it, okay? And, so, and you can show up here and, 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 and take this journey with us, man. And, and we've set this up to be at place. Everything we do here is centered around that idea. 
It's why so many things, and I won't go into all that, but why, why so many things are done the way they're done here. To break down the barriers. This was a statement we've made from the beginning. Break down the barriers that keep people from connecting to Jesus Christ. And the church can do things that become a barrier. Some of you have been there, right? We wanted to try to break down those barriers. I'm not saying we get it 100% right, but our mission is to reach people who aren't connected to Christ. Not get all comfy on a Christian cruise ship, okay? That's not what we're about. This is not the place where you get to come and sit and soak in your nice Christian hot tub, all right? We're on a rescue mission to seek and to save those who are lost. And the growth of this church reflects that. The growth of the Quest Church has primarily come through unchurched or de-churched people. And that many of you, you came to the Quest Church. It's not that you had never been to church, but you haven't been around church in a while. And it was unchurched and de-churched people that have grown the Quest Church. Our average growth over the past 12 years from 2008 to 2020 now has been about 70 people a year. So that's why I said, you know, until this year, that growth line was always going up, about 70 a year. During that same time period, we've averaged about 50 baptisms a year. And so the majority of people that come to the Quest Church come and make a significant connection with Christ at that point in their life that takes them further than they've ever been on their faith journey before. That's how I define it. I'm not telling you who gets saved and who doesn't, but I'm telling you people come, more than 1,100 people come and say, Jim, we need to know more about what being a follower of Jesus. More than 500 of those people then pass through the waters of baptism, and our church grows based on reaching people who really have been disconnected from that relationship with Jesus. And, and our, our mission compels us to. The Apostle Paul said it this way in 1 Timothy chapter 2, God our Savior wants everyone to be saved and understand the truth. That there's only one God, one mediator who can reconcile God to humanity. That's the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. And we embrace that. We want to be a part of that. That's what we primarily exist for is to proclaim that good news. And I'm telling you, the quest body, the quest body embodies this. It's not just talk at the quest. You live this out. And you go out and you meet your neighbors and you talk to your people at work and you invite your family and your friends and the people that you're in circles with on your kids' sports teams or your civic organizations or whatever. The people of the Quest Church are constantly out building relationships that open the opportunity to invite someone to their church. You've been incredible at this Quest Church, awesome at this. And then that got changed, didn't it? That got turned upside down. For 10 weeks, you couldn't invite your friends or your family or your neighbors or your coworkers to church because we couldn't even have the church open. We, we didn't have church on Easter Sunday. Typically, our church has more than 1,200 people show up here on Easter, and we had 10. I mean, you talk about the Easter attendance drop, boy. <laughs> crashed, all right? You know what happened? No, we couldn't do it. And even now, as the church, and we've been a unique church that has an opportunity to reopen when many other churches haven't. But people are reluctant to come, aren't they? It's more difficult. The liberal media, they love to paint the church as the worst culprit in the outbreak of COVID. You know, don't go to church because that's for sure where you'll get COVID, all right? And I'm not saying that there's not some risk. There are risks, okay? But it's more difficult to invite people to church. And so our methodology that has worked so well for us for the past 12 years has been challenged. That landscape has changed. But here's the thing, folks. Your church has always just been a partner for you on that mission, okay? We weren't the primarily influencer on that mission ever. The Quest Church was designed to be a great partner. We want to be a place that when you invite your friends, your neighbor, your coworker, that you can say, come to my church, you're going to like it. It's probably not like any church you've been to. And that when your friend shows up here, it's going to be a different experience. And it's going to be something that invites them in. As I told you folks online, this is a unique day that I'm primarily talking to insiders. Next week, we're going to launch a new series called From This Day Forward. 
And we're going to talk about relationships in every stage of life. If you're single, if you're dating, if you're a newlywed, if you're raising your kids right now, or if you're an empty nester, we're going to spend five weeks talking about principles to make every stage of your relationship an awesome stage uh, as we learn that together. And so whether you believe in God, Jesus, the Bible or not, next week we'll talk about stuff that make a difference in your life on Monday. That's always been the goal, that when your friends, family, neighbors, coworkers came in here, they would go, all right, you know what? That was at least different. That was unexpected, a partner with you. But you've always been the primary influencer, folks. You're the, fo- you're the people who are in a family with family members that aren't connected to Christ. It's you that go to school with people who aren't connected to Christ. It's you who work with people who aren't connected to Christ. It's you who live in a neighborhood with people who aren't connected to Christ. And those people aren't just jumping up one Sunday and saying, hey, I think I'll go to the Quest Church. Sounds like a good idea, right? No, they're not thinking about church until you build the relationship that opens the door for the invite and the influence. And that hasn't changed. You're still that primary primary influencer. It's still your opportunity. And while the opportunity to get them to church may have changed, the opportunity to talk to them about Jesus has not changed. As a matter of fact, I would suggest it's even more more great because people are struggling. People have doubts. They have questions. They have fears. They're in crisis. And it's in those moments that we are most likely to look up and begin to cry out to God, and you know the answer. You know who... Jesus is. You know the change he makes in life. You know that connected to Jesus Christ, you are guaranteed to conquer and that nothing can overcome you because of the power of Jesus that lives in you. You're a light that has an opportunity to shine in darkness. Jesus would say it this way, you should be a light for other people and live wherever you live and wherever you work and wherever you go to school and whatever you do, live in such a way that they would see the good things you do And then give praise to your Father in heaven because you're magnifying his name. And if that leads to an opportunity to bring them to the Quest Church and we can be a part of that journey with them, that's awesome and that's wonderful and that's what we want to be a partner with you in. But that's not the end game. We're not the primary influencer. That's always been you. And so our opportunity to connect people may have been impacted, but your opportunity is not. And I just want to give praise again. The continued commitment to reaching people for Jesus at the Quest Church shows me we're connected to Christ. You're connected to Christ. Because I've heard over and over and over people talking about how you're still reaching out to your family and friends and neighbors. I'm encouraged by the compassion of my Quest Church family. And then finally, Jesus said he would make that church when he's the head full of love. And we define that as equal concern for each other is equal concern. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and and, and just read you a little bit. Paul goes on, he says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. And so it is with the body of Christ. Our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it only had one part. He's covering a lot of ground here. I want to get to this point, okay? But God has combined the members of the body and given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So there should be no division in the body. There's that again. But that its parts should have equal concern for each other. And then Paul even fleshes that out for us. He defines that. Listen to what he says. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Because all of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. God designed us to do this thing together, like a physical body, where what happens to one part of the body affects the entire body, because we're all a part of it together. And folks, a church that is connected to Christ will be known by this, that they stick together in the good times and the bad times. A Christian that is connected to Christ will stick together with their body of believers in the good times and the bad times. We'll suffer with each other, and we will rejoice with each other, whatever comes our way. And so once again, as I think about the Quest Church, I think about some things that happened during this time period. 
you know, we were in the middle of our challenge accepted mission. We were raising money to move to our, so we can one day move to our promised land on FM 35. We were preparing to give like we'd never given before, to make commitments to give over the next three years sacrificially by faith. And, and, and two weeks before our Victory Sunday, the day that we were all going to come together and do that, we had the shutdown. And we felt like God said, we started this journey, we should keep on this journey. And at the end of the day, over $287,000 was given in one day. One day, $287,000. Commitments for another $825,000 to be given over the next three years. To date, six months into this thing, we're six months since we made our commitments. $371,000 has been given. That's in the bank already given, folks. Wow. Yeah. And why would anybody do that in the midst of the chaos and the craziness and the uncertainty that was happening around them? Equal concern. Full of love. My church has a mission, and I'm a part of that mission, and I need to be a part because it's every part doing their part that makes the body great. And so people stepped up and they gave. I think about our worship and our production crew, who for 10 weeks, where the mandate was 10 people can show up. And so we had a crew of people every week. They, they still rehearsed and practiced and prepared and worked. And then they still came on Sunday and faced whatever fears they might have had to be here to make sure that we could get a message out. If you were sitting at home watching online, it's because there's a group of 10 people that says, we're, we're going to make sure we're here to get a message out of hope and encouragement and of life for the people online, wherever you are. Equal concern. Why would they do that? Equal concern. Full of love. Think about our teen, teen Quest, our Kids Quest team. There's, you talk about the challenge for them. Now they're not allowed to interact with the kids and the teens, which is the, the key to their ministry. And so they just step up and say, we're going to become experts at online ministry. We're going to produce content, and we're going to do things that will hopefully draw these kids in, give these parents something they can connect their kids to. We're not going to lose connection with our kids during this time. Why, why do they put out that kind of effort? They could have just sat back and said, well, can't do it. You know what? Don't have church anymore. I guess there's nothing we could do. Why would they do that? Equal concern. Full of love. Because it matters more. Man, I think about our volunteers. when we said we're going to be able to open back up. And I get it, folks. There's, there's fears about that. There's concerns. Nobody is saying that we're not at risk by coming to church. I've never said that. We take steps to mitigate the risk, but I can't guarantee you anything. I can't promise you there won't be an outbreak of COVID at the Quest Church. And so we had to reach out to our volunteers and say, will you come back and will you serve? And overwhelmingly, our volunteers said, you're dang right, man. We are back. You tell us when, where. You tell us what we got to wear and what we got to do because it doesn't matter. We will be there so that we can serve. Why do people do that? Equal concern because they're full of love because they're connected to Christ. And out of that flows a love for each other that takes risks, that goes the extra mile, that serves and sacrifices. So if I'm evaluating the Quest Church based on our connection to Christ, if we're healthy, if we're growing, if we're full of love, then here's what I got to say. There are no perfect people at the Quest Church. We've always said that. We don't even allow perfect people because you would feel uncomfortable here with all us messed up people, you know it. But there is a group of people that has been perfectly united in thought, in mind, and purpose this past year, even with all we face, man. <laughs> and to that group of people, while I may not be able to cast this perfect, specific vision that inspires us for what's next, I do want to say thank you so much for staying on the mission. And I know this, if we keep doing those three things, we stay connected to Christ as our head, we're healthy. We're growing full of love. There are great things in store. The Quest Church is not finished. 
We're just getting started in year 14, okay? There are great things in store. Because Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And the Quest Church is going to stay connected to Jesus and be a part of building that church for his honor and for his glory. And so Quest Church, thank you. Thank you so much for that. To every person. And some of you that hasn't meant coming back to the quest yet, the, the campus, but you're still giving, you're still connected, you're still a part, I'm just as thankful for you. Thank you for continuing to stay connected to Jesus. And I do want to just challenge and hopefully inspire today a group of folks who might not have, have stayed connected. Now's the time for us to renew our focus on the mission that we've been given and to get back on board our connection to Jesus and to continue to follow our unstoppable God. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much. Man, I thank you for the people of the Quest Church who I can honestly stand here today and say, not with hype and not just to blow smoke, but by the evidence of a unified, reaching out, equally concerned, full of love church that we've stayed connected to Jesus Christ. And that in your power, God, we're going forward. And I thank you so much for that. Thank you for every person who's a part of that. Some of them have been around here for 14 years now, always on the mission. Some of them just became partners a a few weeks ago to be a part of this mission. And others are just today thinking it's time that they'll take a next step and going to become a part of this body, God. You're fitting it together just perfectly. And I thank you for the work that you're doing that allows us to experience your power. You are an incredible, unstoppable God. And God, thank you that in your power we're going forward as you lead us and as you nourish this body. It's in Jesus' name we give praise. Amen. Would you all please stand and worship with us this morning?
Christ Church. Woo. You guys can go ahead and be seated. Hello. I will get the announcements right here. I'm Josh Hartman. Me along with my rocking hot smoking wife, Jennifer, are your gathering pastors here. I have a couple quick announcements. First of all, starting not this week, but next week, we have connect groups firing back up. So give it, yeah. And they will be in person this time. And for you guys watching online, there will also be the option to watch via Zoom. Me and my beautiful wife, Jen, will be leading that group. So when you guys get up to get out of here, head back to the connect group wall. Look through those flyers, grab you one. You can sign up either online or on the app, but get yourself signed up. Uh, once they're full, they will close, so you, you need to be doing that today. The other two things coming up, we have our Marriage Enrichment Weekend, and we have a Love and Respect Seminar coming up. It's going to be the Friday evening, the 25th, and then Saturday, the 26th. Um, and you can also sign up for that on the back of the comm card. And we also have Simbus coming up on the same weekend. And I want to put a little extra plug in there for Simbus. Uh, me and my wife went through that. You take this awesome survey. You go through, fill it all out. Now, I'm a nerd, but it actually spits all these results out. And it tells you, man, you need to leverage this stuff in your marriage. You guys rock here. And it also will throw some stuff. Hey, you, you need to be careful when navigating these subjects. So if you've been married for a while, like uh, me and her have been now 15 years, or if you guys are just starting, I would really encourage you to get plugged into one of these two things and leverage this stuff. It'll help you continue to grow and help you continue to, to leverage God into your, into your marriage. With that being said, you guys are officially dismissed.